Hello viewers. This is the second video on Capito Fabrizio fractional derivative. In the first video, I explained the definition of the this Capito Fabrizio fractional derivative. Now, in this video, I am going to dig a little bit more. Okay, we define that d from a to x of order alpha of Capito Fabrizio derivative of some function f of x is equal to m of alpha over 1 minus alpha integral from a to x exponential function of minus alpha into x minus t over 1 minus alpha f prime of t dt where m of 0 and m of 1 is equal to 1 and alpha lies between 0 and 1 and f is a function which belongs to subolive space okay this is what we have defined in the previous video in this video i'm going to investigate what happens if we let this alpha which is the order of this fractional derivative to be 1 what happens when alpha is 1 or more specifically what happens when limit of alpha is 1 uh, since alpha here is between 0 and 1 so it's a fractional derivative but when alpha is 1 it is going to be a normal derivative of function f of x so it should return f prime of x but we need to see whether this definition has this property because whenever we define some new fractional derivative operator we do want that operator to match with the classical results okay for this i just need to take care of this integrand so let if i take the integrand uh, involving alpha only so if i have exponential to the power minus alpha x minus t over 1 minus alpha times 1 over 1 minus alpha and i'll just let it sum k alpha so k alpha is this function i need to investigate this function at different values for example what happens if i take x is equal to t when x is t this k alpha becomes 1 over 1 minus alpha and e raised to power since x and t are equal so it will just 0 which is 1 over 1 minus alpha and if i take limit limit alpha goes to 1 of this k alpha so limit alpha goes to 1 1 over 1 minus alpha it will be infinity okay next case when alpha when x is greater than t okay in this case i repeat the process limit alpha goes to 1 of k alpha is equal to limit alpha goes to 1 of 1 over 1 minus alpha e raised to power minus x minus t over 1 minus and since x is greater than t that means x minus t is positive so this factor is positive sorry here also alpha here and alpha belong to this interval it means alpha is also positive so it means i can shift the exponential function in the denominator so i get limit alpha goes to 1 and i can write this 1 over 1 minus alpha over e raised to power alpha time x minus t over 1 minus alpha and now you can see that at this limit point when alpha is goes to 1 this becomes infinity over infinity form so i cannot apply the limit i have to break it first using l'hopital rule i can have limit alpha goes to 1 this becomes 1 over 1 minus alpha whole scale since my limit is on the parameter alpha so i'm going to differentiate this function with respect to alpha and same in the denominator it is to power alpha into x minus t 
into 1 minus alpha and I will differentiate the exponent as well alpha over 1 minus alpha so its derivative is x minus t over 1 minus alpha superior after differentiating you will get this and here you can cancel out this factor so I am left with limit alpha goes to 1 1 over x minus t into e raised to power alpha into x minus t over 1 minus alpha and now if I will apply the limit you can see that this is 1 into x minus t over 0 so the e to the power infinity which is infinity 1 over infinity so finally it will be 0. So I have two results when x is greater than t the limit at alpha goes to 1 is 0 and when x is equal to t I have undefined limit. You might thinking what happens when alpha, when x is less than t this is not the case because if you look at your definition my interval is from a to x and I am integrating respect to t so t must lie in this interval a to x so a to x that means t lie between a and x so x is either greater than t or it may equal to t because I can take even close interval as well so so x cannot be less than t so I am not having this case here only two cases when x is equal to t limit does not exist when x greater than t it's zero so if I write it collectively I get limit alpha goes to 1 of this function k alpha is equal to infinity when x is equal to t and this limit is 0 when x is greater than t and this is a famous function if you remember it this is direct delta function with exponent with uh, argument x minus t this is direct delta function direct delta function and this direct delta function has a nice property actually it has two nice properties which we are going to use the first property is if we integrate this direct delta function over entire domain delta x minus t dt the answer is always 1 and the second property if we multiply some function say f of t with this direct delta function delta x minus t dt and this is since we know that according to definition this direct delta function is 0 only at x is equal to it has some non-zero value or infinity so it's it is 0 x this whole function x delta x minus t is 0 as soon as x is not equal to t and only non-zero value occurs when x equal to t so we can write this integral as infinite integral minus infinity positive infinity f of f of x into delta x minus t dt because all the other values of t will have nothing to do because they will be 0 this for t is equal to x this is the only value where we have non-zero value where infinity is good. so here we can put f of x outside of the integral and I'm left with infinity to positive infinity delta of x minus t dt and since this integral is 1 so I'm left with f of x so this is the second property of direct delta function f of t delta of x minus t dt this is your second property this is the first property if you want to more about this function i have provided two videos links in the description so you can watch those videos and you can have knowledge more about this special function direct delta function okay so now we have now we have this k of alpha at limiting case alpha goes to 1 equal to direct delta function we, we use this relation to find out the, def, the limit, limiting point of this kappa 2 Fabrizio fractional derivative so what I am going to do 
I'm taking limit alpha goes to 1 of this fractional derivative from a to x of order alpha of capital Fabricius derivative of f of x which is be equal to limit alpha goes to 1 of m of alpha over 1 minus alpha integral from a to x exponential minus alpha into x minus t over 1 minus alpha into f prime of t dt and since m of alpha is normalization function with the property m of 1 is equal to 1 so when apply limit here this becomes 1 and I am taking everything inside of integral from a to x and this is limit alpha goes to 1 1 over 1 minus alpha e raised to power minus alpha x minus t over 1 minus alpha since this apply only on this function and then f prime of t dt and since this can be written as limit from a to x and this is nothing but limit alpha goes to 1 of k alpha into f prime of t dt and we have seen previously that this limit is delta x minus t into f of t dt and according to second property of direct delta function this is nothing but f prime of at the point where this direct delta function has non zero values which is s f prime of x on the left we have limit alpha alpha goes to 1 of this capital Fabius derivative of order alpha from a to x of assumption f of x and you can see that this is very nice result this definition does match with the classical theory when we have alpha equal 1 this derivative matches with the classical one it's just the first derivative of this function which is f prime of x so alpha at alpha is equal to 1 our this new definition does match with the classical calculus and now we need to see that what happens when we have alpha when alpha is 0 uh, does it match with uh, other classical result or not because when alpha is 0 this is going to be useless operator because uh, alpha 0 means we are not differentiating at all f of x so it must return f of x back so we need to see that when we take alpha is equal to 0 does this return function f of x back or not i will see that in the next lecture